What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Moto G Fast Tips and Tricks. So let's check out a variety of different hidden features about the phone. So these are my Moto G Fast Tips and Tricks. The first thing that I want to show you is how to get a battery percentage up in the top right corner here on the device. So by default, all we get is the battery icon. And while that is nice, there's nothing better than having the actual percentage so that you know precisely how much battery is left here in the unit. So to do this, you're gonna pull down the shade, you're gonna go to the settings, you're then gonna go up to search, you're gonna type in battery, and then you'll see right here battery percentage, so tap on that. And then from here, turn on the battery percentage. And now, no matter where you go within the operating system, you can now see the battery percentage up in the top right corner. So definitely very helpful there. Now, in addition to that, there's some other things in the battery menu as well that you might find to be useful. The first one here is battery saver. So with battery saver, it will restrict certain background activity and will give you the ability to get better battery life out of the phone. Now, this isn't something that you necessarily want to keep on all the time because it does kind of mitigate the experience that you're going to get here with the phone. But if you are in situations where you think you're going to have a long day or maybe you are close to running out of battery, then you can turn this on and then from there it is enabled but we're gonna keep this off for now. So that is something that you might wanna keep in mind in case you ever have any concerns about the phone running out of battery. Then from there, we also have the adaptive battery options. So with this, it will limit the battery usage for apps that you don't use very often. This is enabled by default though, so you don't need to turn it on. But if you do wanna turn it off for some reason, then you can access it through that menu. And then of course, we have the battery percentage, which I have enabled here. And then we also have some interesting metrics down at the bottom such as the last full charge and the screen usage since that full charge. Now moving on to the next tip, I'm going to show you two different methods on how to take a screenshot with the phone. So the first method, which is pretty standard with many other devices, you're going to hold the volume down and the power button for about a second or two. And then it's going to take a screenshot. Then from there, you can go over to the actual screenshot itself. You can crop. There's also a pen and highlighter tool so that you can potentially highlight things. And then when you're done with that, you tap on done. And then you have an option to discard or save. You can also share it. So a lot of different options there. So I'm going to discard this for now. But there's also another really cool method to take a screenshot. And that's called three finger screenshot. So pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in three. And then you'll see right here, three finger screenshot. So to capture a screenshot, touch and hold anywhere on the screen with three of your fingers spread slightly apart. So let's try that out. Okay, it's all calibrated. I'm gonna turn that on. And then now, no matter where I am within the operating system, all I have to do is just place three fingers on the interface here and it does take the screenshot very quickly. And in many ways, that's actually a lot easier to do than holding down the two buttons here on the side. So let me know if you find that to be useful. Now with the Moto G Fast, we have gesture-based navigation enabled here on the phone by default. Now this is very similar to the way that you would navigate around some of the newer iPhones, for example, but some people, and I understand why, just want the old school Android three button navigation. And you can actually get that back here on the device by pulling down the shade, go into the settings, go to search, type in nav, search that up. You can see right there, we have system navigation. So again, by default, we have gesture navigation. You can actually adjust this as well. You can change the sensitivity if you wish. But then you can see we also have three button navigation. So I'll activate that right now. And you can see we now get the standard Android navigation buttons that you're likely already very familiar with. So we can go back, home, recent apps, and then you can hold down on the middle button for Google Assistant. It's kind of a personal preference type of thing. I don't really feel like one is necessarily better than the other. It just depends on which one you prefer. I mean, I suppose with gesture navigation, you do get less of the display taken up because you just get this little bar here at the bottom. But in general, it does come down to your personal preference. But that's how to get the standard Android navigation buttons back on the device. Now, the Moto G Fast is a very large phone. 
And while I do like that, it does make it difficult sometimes to reach certain things, such as the notification shade at the top. So there is a cool trick to make accessing that even easier. So go to the settings, go to search, type in swipe, and you'll see swipe fingerprint. So you can see to check your notifications, swipe down on the fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone. So we're gonna turn that on, and now by swiping down on the fingerprint sensor, we can now pull down the notification shade. Moving on to the next one, I'm gonna show you fast flashlight. So pull down the shade, go to the settings, type in fast flashlight, okay? Now that is on by default, but essentially, if you move the phone in two downward chopping motions, it will turn on the flashlight on the back. So we're gonna try that out. There we go, flashlight's on. There we go, flashlight's off. So that's very cool, certainly very convenient. Now the next thing I wanna show you is called quick capture. So you're also gonna go in the search, type in quick, and you'll see right there, quick capture. That's also on by default, but essentially when you twist your wrist twice, it will turn on the camera. So we'll try that out. There we go, it did pull up the camera. Try it out one more time. There we go, it pulled up the camera. You can do this from anywhere within the operating system. Very cool. Next I wanna show you a feature called swipe to shrink. So again, the display is very big here on the phone and sometimes it can be difficult to reach certain things on the interface here. So with swipe to shrink, shrink the screen by swiping down from the center to the bottom right or left corner. So we'll turn this on. So let's try this out. Very cool. So it did make the screen a lot smaller. And then from here, we essentially get like a mini phone that's a lot easier to navigate with just one hand. And then to bring this back to normal, just pull down the shade and then tap to restore the full screen. So that's very cool. Now the next thing I wanna show you is called flip to DND. Essentially, if the phone has the ringtone on, you can put it in vibrate just by putting the phone display down. So we're gonna pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in DND, flip for DND. We'll turn that on so you can see, turn on do not disturb by turning the phone face down, okay? And there we go. So it's now in vibrate. Now I'm gonna pick it up and then it's back in the regular ringtone mode. So that's really awesome. Definitely very helpful if you're in a meeting, for example, because you don't want your phone going off when you're in that meeting. Now, I'm a big fan of the keyboard that comes here with the phone, but you can see by default, the numbers don't have their own keys. Of course, you can go off to the side here and access them that way, but let me show you how to get actual keys for the numbers themselves on this first panel. So once you're in the keyboard, go to this gear, you're gonna go to preferences, and then you're gonna turn on number row, now go back, and then you'll see that we do have the numbers right here. So a very easy way to get your numbers to have their own individual keys here on the keyboard. Now another cool thing too in the keyboard settings is that you can change the theme as well. So if you wanna set it to blue, for example, we'll apply, we'll go back, and now the keyboard is blue. So this is something that I think a lot of people overlook but you also have other ways to customize. You can download images, gradients. So a lot of different customization options here when it comes to the keyboard, which is very awesome. Now this next feature that I wanna show you is the screen timeout option. So go to display, go to advanced, and then you're gonna see screen timeout. So by default, it's actually set to 30 seconds. Now in my opinion, for day-to-day -day usage, I feel like that's too fast. So in my opinion, the sweet spot is about two minutes, but if you do wanna speed it up, you can also put it on 15 seconds. Now, since I've been using this phone to make videos about it, I set it to 30 minutes, but again, I recommend going through here, trying out different screen timeout times and seeing which one best fits you. And then finally, I wanna show you the various home screen settings. So by long pressing on the wallpaper here, you can see that we do get an option for home settings. We'll go to that. And there's a couple of different things that you can change up here. The first thing is, is that the notification dots, which are these little dots that appear when you do have a notification for whatever app gets that notification, you can actually turn that off. I'm personally a fan of turning it off because I feel like it doesn't really help that much, but you go to advanced and then you can see allow notification dots and then turn that off. And then we also have some other options as well. 
So add icon to home screen. So with this, which is enabled by default, whenever you're downloading a new app on the device, it will place that app on the home screen right away. But since we do have the app drawer, I'm not really a fan of that feature. So I'm gonna turn that off. And then another thing I wanted to point out as well is the home screen rotation. So even if you turn auto rotate on, by rotating the home screen, it doesn't actually rotate. So a situation where I can see you maybe wanting to rotate it is if you are on a road trip and you have the phone mounted in landscape and then you want to also be able to navigate around the phone, then what you can do here is go back to those home settings, turn on allow home screen rotation, and now when you rotate the display, it does indeed rotate the home screen itself. So kind of a cool thing there and it could come in handy in certain situations. But these are my tips and tricks and hidden features about the Moto G Fast. Definitely let me know if these helped you or if you learned anything new, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one.